Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning. We are happy to have you once again to the EdTech Institute. Uh, my name is John Shoemaker from the Department of Educational Technology, and we are happy to have each and every one of you here today with us. Um, just a couple of things before we get started. Uh, first of all, uh, our question for this session is to let us know, have you ever been to an escape room before? And if you have, like, let us know your thoughts. What was it like? Uh, what did you experience? What were some learning? Uh, what, what were some things you learned there? Were you frustrated? Uh, excited? Um, did you actually get out of your escape room? Let us know those things about your experiences with the escape rooms uh, while we go over all the housekeeping things as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so as always, don't forget this session is recorded and it is live on YouTube. It will be on our channel and uh, posted there right after this session is over. So it's also on our website as well. So I will share that information too. And very, very, very important, listen up, attendance will be done at the end and that will be done after prizes. So we'll share that link after the prizes. As always, I see the chat box already flying by over there on the right-hand side. So please feel free to share your thoughts and integrations uh, and ideas that you learn from this. We have our moderators in the chat. They have a little wrench beside their name. So thank you, EdTech team, for moderating the chat and answering questions. Uh, we are so glad to have you guys in the chat box as well. Uh, as always, just sharing our schedule. It's now 11 o'clock, so we have Adam Bello. Uh, who's going to be talking about Breakout EDU. At 1 o'clock, we have a, a take two for Kevin Honeycutt after that amazing session yesterday. If you missed his closing keynote yesterday, it was drinking out of uh, more than even a fire hose. I don't even know what it was. It was just so many things coming at you, uh, and it was just amazing. So you're not going to want to miss that 1 o'clock follow-up. And then at two o'clock, uh, Joe and Kristen Merrill from the interactive class is gonna be here. That's gonna be their first time here in Palm Beach to talk to us. And we're gonna close everything out with Carla Jefferson talking about digital equity um, and the opportunities uh, surrounding that topic in blended learning. As always, again, I just wanna thank you guys so much for all the views that we had yesterday. It just totally has blown uh, the entire EdTech team out of the water. You, you've blown our mind. So we do appreciate that more than you guys will ever know. Um, and, and again, we're, we've upped the challenge. So we've made the challenge a little bit even harder. We hit 2,000 subscribers at the beginning of last session. And you guys uh, like bowled that number right over. Right now we're at 2,026 subscribers. So we're gonna try to get to 2,500 by the end of the day. That would be an awesome number. Uh, we're, we're dreaming big, like we've been talking about yesterday. So um, please feel free to like and subscribe. It's just down below, just click the like button. We wanna try to get at least 100 likes for each session. And the subscribe button is down there too. Um, the bell is there, basically the bell will email you when we go live. But if you don't want to be emailed, you just don't click the bell. You can still subscribe to our channel. We also want to share that our recorded video sessions are on the website now. So we have on the Institute site uh, day one and day two under recorded video sessions. What they are is they're called playlists. So it's a YouTube playlist. So the first video is there. But then you can see in the right-hand side over here, I know my mouse is really small. You can't even see it. It's totally gone. Um, but over here on the right-hand side, there's a little hamburger menu. Um, and you just click that, and it opens up so you can see all the other um, videos that were, were played that day. So that's where all the sessions are going to be uh, on the Institute site. We're also creating a resources page. Like I know a lot of you have asked about Kevin's resources from yesterday. All of those will be um, on a separate page on our website. So be on the lookout for that in the coming days. And uh, one other thing, I have loved looking through the hashtag of EdTechPBC, seeing where you guys are joining us from. It has been so fun to see where you're learning from and hearing your experiences. So please don't forget to um, to use the hashtag EdTechPBC and uh, 
tag us at EdTech PBC. And if you're talking about this session, you're also going to want to tag at Breakout EDU and, and show your love for them as well. So with that, I am happy to introduce uh, someone I've worked with for a couple of years and known a couple of years. Um, Adam Bello is the co-founder of Breakout EDU. And before he comes on, there were some questions in the chat that I was seeing earlier. Uh, Breakout EDU is at a lot of our schools already, the physical kit. Um, many of our schools, we've been doing the physical version for years. Um, and then you can also have the subscription when you buy the box now. So a lot of schools have this. You may need to ask your admin. A lot of the media centers have them as well. So for now, this is like an informational session so you know what this is, uh, but also know that a lot of our schools already have this. You just have to figure out if your school has it or not. So keep that in mind. Reach out to your media specialists. Reach out to your admins. And if not, um, it's really not a heavy lift. Uh, a lot of schools are purchasing it because it's such a great, engaging activity. It's one of the most engaging things I have seen in a very long time. Um, so with that, I'm going to have Adam come join us. Adam from Breakout EDU, thank you so much for joining us and go ahead and take it away. Hey, thanks so much, John. Thank you guys so much for being here and for doing this. I feel like this you know, before I jump into slides and talking about breakout, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say a sincere thank you to to all of the teachers out there that have really, you know, I don't want to say stepped up because I feel like every day you step up, but I feel like this was the most unprecedented time to be living and teaching. And I feel like the unreal, you know, the the, the banding together that educators from all over the place have done um, is, is commendable. And I think that taking a situation that is the furthest thing from ideal, I'm here in New York. So I feel like, you know, I kind of felt the world crash down all around and, and from both teachers and students and seeing all the different perspectives, but, you know, teachers never cease to amaze me. I was one once upon a time. So I, I really commend you for not only just doing what you've done every day to kind of move forward and be there and support your kids in the learning environments, but also, you know, being better than you were the day before. I think that that's kind of the the unsung story of here of teachers is just, uh, yeah. So someone said, "Is this Star Wars in the background?" Yes, it is Star Wars. Uh, good, good eyes. Um, yeah. So anyway, super excited to be here. Thank you so much, and I love the fact that you're sharing this with all these other teachers that are able to come in uh, outside of the district. Although I think about four or five years ago, I did get to go and speak at Palm Beach, um, so that was great but it's exciting to be here virtually and talking about something I know a little bit about and love a lot is Breakout EDU. So I'll jump in over to the slides over here. And if you have any questions in the chat, feel free to ask them. You could always, and I'll give my, my info over here. Uh, on Twitter, it's just at Adam Bello. If you need to reach me for any reason, feel free. It's adam at breakoutedu.com, so, so feel free. And we're gonna talk about unlocking this love of learning and the four Cs. So as I mentioned, um, I was a teacher and basically this is my kind of resume of sorts running uh you know working at a game company you have to kind of gamify the even the resume over here so i was a high school english teacher i'll, I'll go back so you can actually see that slide but uh high, high school english teacher then wound up working as a technology training specialist founded a couple of edtech companies along the way uh one was edge clipper the other was we learned it i uh, worked at the white house for a little while the previous administration and uh, co-founder of Breakout EDU and some other stuff in between. So it's been, uh, you know, I've been in education for the last almost 15 years, 17 years, something like that. And uh, basically I wanna say it's not a one-way conversation. You know, me talking about Breakout, I'm gonna try to keep an eye on the feed, but I also would, um, would as I said, feel free to reach out. Um, on Twitter, you know, there is the hashtag EdTechPBC. I'm gonna skip some of the intro stuff. We'll get to the, uh, the elephant in the room over here which is the fact that, yeah, I, I work at Breakout. So, you know, that's that's our team over here. This is, uh, we're a merry band of a uh, big team of seven right now. Um, but so the, the, the point I, I share this is not only all of the people in this picture with the exception of Chewbacca, we're teachers and we're all dedicated to kind of building what we wanna see in classrooms. Um, but the other piece of it is just to say, so take what I say with a grain of salt. You know, I'm fully aware that this is, uh, you know, that this is me talking about the thing that I work on and, and you know, do uh, as a job. But at the same point, I, I really love it. And I want to share a little bit about why I'm so passionate about it, not just from a product standpoint, but from uh, what I think it could do in education. So let's move along. 
And if my slides start working again, that would be super awesome. Hopefully they will. If not, we'll figure out plan B as teachers are always doing. And of course, you know, as, as you guys, uh, as I mentioned, have done already. So I'm gonna try to refresh this and go back over here. And let's see, come on slides, you can do it. All right, we might be going to plan B over here, which is totally fine. Um, give me one second as I as I shuffle up over here. That's and okay. I was gonna say maybe just open the regular keynote deck right, and we'll, we can do it that way. way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing right now. So give that a second to load up, and that's okay. I will switch over to that, and we will we will move along. All right. Um, cool. We've got a lot of great uh, great things in the chat already. People admiring your Legos in the back. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Me. Loving the timeline. Um, I admit I almost wanted to steal it after I saw you speak at the Brain Pop conference. I thought that was an awesome oh, idea. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for the taking. I, I I don't own that. Uh, the let's see. Let me remove this screen. Yep. Go let ahead and then, the there you go. Screen. Hold on one second. Let me uh, yep. stop screen, share screen. Take, take your time. All right. Let's see. All right. Plan B is in full effect. All right. All right. Let's, let's see what I got. All right. Cool. So the yeah. Other so can we just uh, Adam real quick? Do you mind just hitting that format button in the top right corner? It'll close oh, the window off to the side. There you go. That's a little bigger. There you go. Cool. Uh, oh. So yeah, the other thing I'm the co-founder of these two kids, which uh, is probably the best job I have, and um, this is them in front of their school slash my home. Um, <laughs> definitely not the way we thought we were going to end the year, but. Uh, they are still in class right now. Actually, they're downstairs doing their, uh, I think my son's in social studies. My older son is in social studies. My younger son, I believe, is in ELA uh, right now. So definitely the, the way I see education is not only through the eyes of a former classroom teacher and someone who works in the ed tech space, but I see it through my kids. And I think that that helps to kind of frame the conversation here is that we're going to talk about games and education. We'll talk about what breakout EDU is, and then we'll talk about like kind of what I think the secret sauce is, right? The, the, the connection to collaboration in the four C's. And then I'll talk about getting started, especially doing the digital piece. So games and education, they've been around for a long time. I, I know by asking the question, how many of you play games? I would imagine most of you will say yes. Most of you would say you play games. Maybe it's not things like Dungeons and Dragons, that's fine, but maybe it's what I used to call these toilet games, like Candy Crush, like games you would play for five minutes. Um, but, you know, the first Nintendo game, a lot of people do remember the first Nintendo game, and it wasn't Mario Brothers, and it wasn't Duck Hunt. Uh, it was actually the playing card company was Nintendo. It started back in the late 1800s, and this was the very first Nintendo game. And no, you did not have to blow on it to get it to start again. So that was interesting. Um, and games have been around forever. This is Senate, which is one of the first games. It looks like a, a lion and, a, and an antelope playing chess. But uh, this was one of the first games and first recorded games, and it was from 1550 BC. So definitely a lot of, of old school games. And of course, hopefully many of you and maybe even being home with your families are playing more games. I know myself on the weekends, we're definitely trying to pull out some of these older games or try, even got a few new games to play with the kids because it's really an enjoyable way to do it. It's an enjoyable experience. And games have been in classrooms a long time ago in a classroom far, far away. This is kind of what the computer lab looked like and when I remember the computer lab, right? I remember Commodore 64s, but the, we would play games like the Oregon Trail. And, and we would play games, you know, obviously, I, I know I say this and it sounds terrible, but every child should have the experience of dying of dysentery, um, you know, at least once or the understanding what that means. And um, this is the, uh, the Reader Rabbit and Math Blaster and Word Hunter or uh, Number Munchers, Carmen Sandiego and when it came into the classroom as teachers, I remember doing this. And I thought this was like the real deal. Like, oh, I'm gamifying my class. I'm going to put a PowerPoint in front of the kids and ask them the same multiple choice questions that I would have them do on a worksheet. But in reality, you know, our kids, they're born gamers. This is my son doing backup vocals for Rock Band back in the day. Pokemon Go was the biggest craze about two, three years ago. And when it came out, the crazy stat was that children who are known as you know the couch potatoes, these video game kids, got up and they walked almost three million miles in the first six weeks of that game's launch. Of course, Minecraft has taken over, and I think Minecraft and education does some incredible things. I know my kids build unbelievable representations of different historical places, uh, fictional places from books, 
and then they just build for fun. And I think it's a valid exercise in understanding uh, both collaboration and all sorts of other interesting things that Minecraft can teach you. And then you have Fortnite, you know, Fortnite's taken kids by storm. And the, the, the nice thing about Fortnite, the interesting thing about Fortnite, certainly I'm not advocating for it in education by any stretch of the imagination. But what I've seen is that my, my younger son has turned to Fortnite as a way to kind of talk to his school friends. And that's a really interesting thing for me. And it brings up the piece that I think Breakout EDU, and we'll get to that in a moment, deals with so nicely. It is that collaboration, that four C's concept. So we even gamify things like working out, right? Like hopefully, you know, we're all active enough. And I know a lot of people are closing their rings and trying to kind of stay active, especially in this, this very interesting time where at least here in New York, it's been, I've been in my house for four months now and, and with very little outside, uh, you know, I go for a walk around the block once in a while, but really not going out much. But gamification for me started when I was an adjunct professor at Hunter College. Uh, Hunter College in New York City, I was tutoring a, a student. He had dyscalculia, which is a math disability. And we gamified the class. By, I created this. It took me forever to build by hand this board game for him called Manhattan Math. And the terrible part about this is that it was not a good game. It was literally a gamified worksheet. Uh, you know, he'd pick a card and have to answer a question and roll the dice and move the number of spots and then answer another question. So, you know, it was the proverbial lipstick on a pig experience there. And uh, the, the problem with kids is that they know if you're pouring chocolate on their on their broccoli, right? They know if the vegetables have been poisoned. Um, you know, oh, they're trying to sugarcoat it type of thing. And as much as you likely know, like gamification is a lot more than just this. Gamification involves taking challenge and goals and progress. And, you know, sometimes there's competition and team spirit and skill. There's all these little facets that go beyond what a, you know, can you answer the question type of game provides. And that's really where breakout comes in. It is a wonderful time to be a learner. As you know, there's a lot of problems in education. One of my biggest worries is that kids will sit in classes and say, well, only 12 more years, put it on cruise control and we'll get out of here eventually. And I know some kids do. So, at Breakout, uh, it is time for something different. That's kind of the original tag phrase we used to use. And just to go over what is Breakout EDU, it is an immersive learning games platform that empowers educators to facilitate content aligned games in their classroom. Breakout EDU, and out of the classroom as well, Breakout EDU games cultivate critical thinking, teamwork, and complex problem solving. Really, we're out to prove that learning and fun are not antonyms, right? You can have a good time and learn. And I think, especially now, especially now, it is so important that as kids are sitting in front of Zoom screens and getting their synchronous or asynchronous instruction and watching videos and interacting, not capturing those moments of true collaboration and teamwork is, is definitely a loss, right? We need to figure out ways to do that. So Breakout took the idea of the escape room. We had the escape room, the room movement where you would go into a room, you would look for clues, you would then have 60 minutes to solve the puzzles and break out of the room literally physically. So we took that idea. Uh, James and Mark, uh, the co-founders of mine, started this in 2015. This was us at ISTE that year. We got some really fun educators together and we played an escape room as, as a fun way to announce that we were building this, this new thing. And uh, originally it started with these wooden boxes, super fun. We realized very quickly you can't lock kids in classrooms. So to really replicate the escape room was not gonna work for us. So uh, Mark Hammonds in his back in his garage was building out of wood these boxes that, that were sold as the original breakout EDU kits. Since then, we've kind of progressed into having a, uh, a, a less heavy <laughs> and uh, you know a lighter weight way to, to kind of bring these escape rooms to the classroom. This is what they look like when they're all locked up. And people might say, well, what's in the box? Well, what's in the box is it's basically a box of locks. We sell these resettable items that help you build an escape room experience. But the nice thing about that is that in building the, the physical boxes, we also decided to build out a companion library of games. So right now we have 1600 games that you can play on our platform. And there are games that are both physical with the boxes and there are games that are digital and they're intended to be played together collaboratively. Uh, and we've aligned the games. We have games for everything. Of course, we have games for holidays like Halloween and all sorts of fun things you would do in class. But we also have content aligned games for um, K through six, we have games that are aligned to all of the science standards, the ELA standards, math standards, and uh, next generation, uh, sorry, next generation science standards, and even games for social studies topics for most of those courses. And so there's a lot of content that can kind of take life and make it fun. And if you look at the next generation science standards, this is the best part, is like 
it's not a stretch to say that their content a lot. I mean, the content has to be aligned, but if you look at the practice for the common core standards, making sense of problems and persevering and solving them. Well, basically that's, that's literally the definition of what breakout EDU does, whether it's physical or digital, you are literally given a problem and you cannot move forward unless you get it solved reasonably abstract and qua uh, quantitatively construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. You're working with a team. You're trying to say, Jenny, I don't think it's 10 because what if you did X, Y, and Z using appropriate tools strategically, all these different things. And the nice thing about the platform and talk about that all the time is that it's very malleable. So whatever it is that you teach, you can teach music, you can teach phys ed, you can teach um, inclusion, you can teach special ed, you can teach all sorts of different types of subjects. Anything you teach can be kind of wrapped around a breakout EDU game or baked into a breakout EDU game. Because we've, we've, from the very, very earliest days, came up with what we call the GDK, which is really just a game developer kit. And essentially it's instructions, videos, uh, documents, all sorts of instructions on how you can design games that are better suited to your classroom. The nice thing is, is that all of our digital games, and I'll show you this in a little bit, can quickly be edited and shared. So if you want to take out something or add in your own thing or change one of the questions, you could start with a ready-made template and then just go from there. So the nice thing is also we focus not on just playing games, but also creating them and not just you as the teacher students can use the digital game creator tool to make their own digital content. So over here, students could choose to make any type of game that they want. We have games that are as simple as one single puzzle. We have games that are non-sequential, meaning you could solve it in whatever order you want. And then we have our most challenging games, which are story driven, but that are sequential. So you have to get one lock open to move to the next one. And then the students would log in they can get assigned to any of these games. You could also see and review the games that they create. And you might be thinking, well, how do I teach them how to do that? Well, we have student game design courses. So there are courses that can be certainly run virtually where you can provide the resources to the students on why game creation matters, like how to think through the process of creating each of these individual types of locks. They play examples. They have printables and they have collaborative pieces they could use during using Kami or they could just write and just send back through Google Classroom or whatever, explaining what their logic is. And then they can use the platform to actually build the game and share it with their students. And while, while the model looking at creating at the top of the pyramid might be uh, old, the, the logic is still there, right? I mean, we still want kids to kind of be functioning by creating their own understanding as opposed to just consuming. So. I'll move to break it you in the four C's. It, it's really one of those remarkable things that we found out very early on. It was almost as a happy accident. You know, this did start with, with James and Mark coming up with a few games that were great for team building. But the thing we realized immediately was that every game relies on the four C's. We're not trying to sit here as a company saying, oh, you know, we're going to try to make it fit to this buzzword. No, it literally like you have to have creativity, collaboration, critical thinking and communication. Otherwise it doesn't work. And so, all of those things are just parts of playing a breakout EDU game, both the physical and the digital. Now the physical, I think, has the appeal, of course, because you get kids out of seats. You get kids not sitting in their space, doing the same thing and getting a lesson. It does combat seat time. However, in a world where we're not in class, we also look to make up for the thing that we find great about breakout EDU is that collaboration. Because I know, and this is, my kids' teachers are incredible. I am so, unbelievably impressed with what they've been able to do in the short time that they've had to figure out how to do it. Um, you know, that they, they restructured the same way many of you have, they restructured what there was their traditional classroom and lessons and, and thinking about what the kids would do and they've made it more uh, accessible. And I think that they've been great at, at meeting the kids needs in terms of how much screen time they can handle and how much work they can handle and what to do in terms of pushing them. But I do think the piece that's missing, and it's just, it's not their fault, it's just the reality is that collaboration does seem to fall apart when you're always online. But the nice thing is that Breakout EDU allows you to have that organically. And it also is a platform that, you know, we talk about in buzzwords, you know, oh, we want kids to fail forward. We want them to learn by failing. Well, in reality, taking risks is part of playing a Breakout EDU game. Think of, think of the concept, whether it's physical or digital. On the digital site, you're gonna enter an answer and if you get it wrong, you are told immediately, no, you are incorrect. It's the same thing as if I, when I was teaching English, I would give back a test or a paper or a spelling quiz or whatever it was. And I'd be like, you're wrong. And the kid's like, well, I got 85. I guess I'm okay. In a breakout game, the game is still locked. Like you can't get forward unless you get it open. So the perseverance is there. 
And it, oftentimes in classrooms, I would get involved too soon. You know, many of us, we're trying to teach kids, we're trying to stick up with the lesson, we're trying to, even if it's online, even more importantly online, you're trying to keep things flowing. So you'd stop them from that thinking process, which is super important. And a lot of times I'd be like, yes, let me dictate to you exactly what the answer is because we have to bring the rest of the kids up to speed. Well, in Breakout EDU, we have the idea of a hint card. So the digital games have the idea of a hint where you press hint and it, lives, it lets you pause the game and think about it. The digital games have that. The physical games have these physical cards that you would hand to the teacher to get a hint. And the other piece that I think it, it talks about a great deal is that these games are great for motivation. You know, it's not about getting a grade. It's about doing something that you accomplish. In class, you know, a lot of times the end game is the grade. But in gaming, the boss level is the end game. It's the hardest thing. It's the most fun or most challenging piece. You know, I think that that's kind of one of the pieces that are magic. The other thing I'll talk about briefly is, is the end of the game. So playing a game doesn't end with just like the locks open, the kids celebrate, and that was a fun activity. We decided that the experience could be so much more. So we came up with originally what we called the reflection cards. And what we more recently released, and you can get a free downloadable version of this online, is the four C cards. These are cards that basically touch on each of those four C's. So when you do an activity, and we presume that it's, of course, a breakout, a breakout EDU game. However, this can be used in different ways in the classroom, different ways online, where you can have your kids talk about what the experience was like to work in a group, how you could be a better group member. And the, the really cool thing is we've seen some very amazing and, and somewhat unplanned activities here. Students of all different abilities have come together to, to talk together. You know, kids that don't necessarily always gel or necessarily talk to one another see value in each other. You know, there is the fact that these kids of all different abilities, of all different um, ages and, 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 you know, socioeconomic backgrounds come together and work together and see value in their peers. And, you know, one of my favorite stories is there was a, a teacher that wrote into us and said that there's a kid in her class who's autistic and, you know, is, is often not engaged, but because of their gift of thinking differently, they were able to be such a big contributor and save the last lock. And we've heard countless stories of a similar nature where, where kids of all different abilities can really play a role. Sometimes it's the quietest kid or the one that's picked last in sports or whatever it is, winds up being an, on equal footing because their thinking is valued, their, their process and their collaboration is valued. So again, it works great for physical, but how do you translate that to a digital piece? And um, that's where the platform comes in. So I'll talk a little bit about the platform. Uh, you know, as John mentioned, there is, um, the breakout edu kits do come with access to the platform. We do have school-wide access where it's just digital access for the games. We've done free trials for this period of COVID-19 where you can get access to it. And there's a, a site called um, breakout edu slash fun at home, which has tons of games that we've made free for this the time being. And so we, we really tried to support teachers that are using, uh, that are looking for fun and engaging things to do with their kids. So the website to get onto the platform itself is platform.breakoutedu.com. There's also another site that gives you lots of information about the site, which is breakoutedu.com. So those are two sites. The one thing I'll talk about first is these are great to play via Zoom or Google Meet. With Google Meet, it's really simple. The same way I'm screen sharing to you now, what I would do is I would screen share a digital game and elicit conversation between the students. You could either share the game to them and have them play on their own, either in small groups or just you know together and, or individually. But what I like is that you serve as the hands for them, entering the combinations as they think aloud as a group. And there's ways to kind of segment that. In Zoom, you could even take it a step further. If you're using Zoom, you're able to um, let the kids take over the screen. So as the controller of the screen, you could share it to them, let them try to enter the combination, be like, oh, Johnny, nice job. You got that one. All right, let's go to Beth and see if she can get it done or whatever. So there's lots of ways to do that. So I will try to do some live demoing um, and also keep an eye on the, on, the, um, on the chat to see a little bit. Can you share that link? I will share that link. Let me do this. I'm going to go and stop sharing this screen and share a different screen. Give me two seconds. And... I'm going to share this screen here. So this is, hopefully you can see this. This is the platform.breakoutedu.com. There's a couple of resources I want to share with you right away. So breakoutedu.com slash fun at home. You'll see there's a whole bunch of games over here broken up by grade level that you can read about, see what the content area is, et cetera. By clicking on one of those games, it loads the game itself. So I'll scroll down to the bottom. 
And let's see, this is one that I uh, had worked on called Zombie Outbreak. I'm gonna click on that with one click. It opens up the digital game. And this is what all the digital games look like at the moment. We're actually super excited. We're working on a, a big refresh. All the games will look even, well, I don't wanna say even better, they'll look awesome. So, um, but basically the games have this structure. There's a story up on top and then each of the individual locks, this one is connected because you see there's arrows going from one to the other, have a piece of con over here and they have a clue. So the clue over here is the story, right? So it says, you know, you, you fear this day would come and it has, but instead you're of sitting in your, maybe this game is a little too close to home as the zombie apocalypse. I don't know, maybe it really seems uh, too close, but I can go and look at this piece of content. I can read this clue and, you know, not to, to ruin the game over here, but if you look closely at the bottom over here, you'll see full zombie outbreak reported in, and you'll see these dashes and dots. Of course, you could learn that those dashes and dots are going to be um, Morse code. You would either know Morse code or more than likely you would look up Morse code. We're not afraid of Google with Breakout EDU. The whole point is that you wanna teach kids to find things in the resources that they have. Some games that are printables, uh, that, that are printed games include those resources. Others like the digital ones would expect the students to be able to go to resources or for younger players to even include links in the content to open that up so you could find that information. So really simply, I would come over here and I would type in the Morse code over here is NYC. It does feel quite frankly, like the zombie apocalypse has taken hold in New York City. And then it moves on to the next piece over here. And this one is a shape uh, lock. So you can see there's shapes, there's colors, there's directions, there's letters, and there happens to be numbers as well. And this one, again, you would just look at it and solve the puzzle. We'll come back to that in a minute, but I want to kind of go over here and take you a little bit more on a tour of what we got. So, you know, the, the way the site is designed is basically by subject. You can go in over here and try to dig through, but the nicer part is that you can come over to filter and choose whatever you want. So let's say I want third grade games that are math games and I want only digital ones. I click on search. And now it's gonna provide me a list of all the games that are math games for third grade. And you'll notice there's seven pages. That means there's around 70 results. So I can go to a day at the park over here, which is about using money. And each of these games gives you a story. It gives you the answers. So, uh, you know, but more importantly, the explanation as to why those answers are the way they are. At the end of the game, it provides these reflection questions. So what could you ask your kids at the end that would kind of bring up more of the lesson and you know like maybe they got the answer right but they didn't understand the concept fully so let's let's help them understand that this play game button obviously would launch the game itself but i want to show you these buttons over here because there's two things you could do first of all if you want to come back to this game later you could bookmark it now if i'm logged in it's in my account and i could find it in my bookmark games but i also could go over here and copy it what when i copy it it allows me to edit the game and change it up however i want so i'll show you that real fast i go to copy and then it says view copied game. I can now take this link and share it with the kids. I can embed it in a different website. There's a whole bunch of ways I could do that, but I also can come over here to that game and edit it. So my screen resolution is a little funky. That's why the buttons are a little weird, but I can come over here to a day at the park. I can click on edit and now I can change things. So for example, if I didn't like this question, it wasn't fitting for my kids. I can come over here and I can change whatever the answer is, or I can change the the question itself. And then if I wanted to, I can go and quickly assign this. So we have the ability to create different classes. Let's say I go and I assign it to my new class and I go to assign. Now all of the kids that have signed up for Breakout EDU, they would see it in their feed to go and play it. Alternatively, if you don't wanna set up your kids to have another access point in another system, you could easily share that URL and get them up and running or share your screen and play it with them as I'm doing right here. So this could literally be you sharing it from one screen to the other without having to do any sort of, of pieces. So I'm looking over here um, at, at some of the questions over here. Uh, do, uh, yeah, so so basically there's a lot of fun, uh, fun activities that you can play with. There's also a lot of resources. So for example, I talked about the student game design courses. This is teaching you how to make games. This is great, you know, again, if you have kids that you're, if you have a subscription and you have a young kid at home, might be a fun thing to try out. I know my, my children were supposed to go to camp this summer and that is no longer a thing. So they are gonna be playing a lot of breakout EDU <laughs> and, um, and doing some other fun things at home. So that's basically, oh, let me show you one last thing and then I will try to take some questions. I know there's about five minutes left. So I showed you how to filter. The other thing I wanna show you is 
let's say I go to science. These are grade tabs over here. So what we've done, not only do we have the 329 games, not only do we have games that you could filter by free or paid or, or, or uh, physical or digital, but if I go over here to let's say third grade science, it brings up a sheet where I could literally get quick access to each of the next generation science standards for each of the main units that you would teach in that course. So you would see over here, these are the main units of study in most third grade uh, classes. And there are digital games for each of the uh, topics. And then there's culminating kit required games. Well, those might be out of the question, certainly until September, hopefully uh, we'll be back by then. But if not, there's lots of things. Here's a game, um, behavior of outside forces, and it's called let the weekend begin. All you would have to do is assign this or copy it if you wanted, or just simply share this URL and you are in the game playing a content line science game that is aligned to uh, student, for students that are exactly in your grade with that standard. So hopefully we've taken some of the, the work out of that. We're constantly working on improving our platform and making it better and adding more content. We'll definitely be having some fun back to school games. Uh, we've been talking about doing some fun games that are great to get your kids up and running in the school year. And, um, you know, as I said, we're a team of teachers. We're, we're very conscious of the fact that, you know, this is an unreal time to be a teacher. It's also an unreal time, as I'm sure you're aware, but, but we don't often think about it as the students. Like, I, you know, it, it is an impossible time for so many of us. But as I said in the beginning, you guys are, are, are killing it. You know, I feel like the, the teachers I've talked to, the teachers I know from Twitter, folks like John, folks like, you know, you came up with a conference online, offered it to thousands of people for free and are looking at a way of sharing ideas and making our practice better. So um, it's really it's really remarkable and it's heartwarming for me to see this. So um, I really, I appreciate the job you're doing and anything that we can do to support that job. And we've tried by, as I said, making the resources free during the COVID period, um, trying to, to do more content, more more onboarding. This, this over here, if you look at uh, um, real fast, I'll open it up. That's not what I wanted to click on. I clicked on the wrong thing want to hit this zoom button over here. This is just a very quick explanation of how to use breakout with zoom. So there's a, a, a and uh, hangouts for those of you that are using Hangouts. It's like four or five steps. It just walks through the process of exactly how to do it. Talks about some tips on how to do it. Uh, you know, like there's a guide even that, that you can download and have and share. So it, this is what we're hoping to get in classes, kids playing collaboratively, sharing, the the you know that moment of success working through their frustration and you know it's really it's an important part of what is school and is learning and it's what we were working on very hard uh you know pre-covid but we also know that the digital is possible to play the same way and have those same experiences and so that's uh you know that that's really what i hope that you guys uh have, have taken from this session and if there's more information you need please feel free to reach out the, um, I saw someone said, where is the free stuff? There's a site called Fun at Home and all of the games linked here. We have a large library of games will be free through the end of June. We'll also come out with some summer things. There's a lot of content that you could look at. Um, you could even search the site for the word free to find some of our free offerings and um, you know, talk to your schools because obviously as a teacher, I'm certainly not telling you here, go buy something, especially now. But you know, if it's something that your school has already, inquire. If it's something that you would like for the school, obviously you can ask them. But we really, um, you know, it's an honor getting to talk to people that are doing the hardest work right now. And um, I, I really just appreciate you giving me a, a few minutes of time. So if there's any other questions, please let me know. I'll try to read on the feed over here. I'm done presenting, presenting. I'll stop sharing. And uh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Uh just another fire hose session of so much content, so much exciting things. Um, so many of the same questions over and over we're trying to answer. Um, so again, everyone, uh, it is a subscription service. There is a physical box you can buy. Um, we don't have a district license, but a lot of our schools have already made the purchase in Palm Beach. Um, I can't tell you who, uh, that's the problem. So reach out to your school people, your admins, your media specialists. I know, our PE department has been doing this amazing job. Amy, Denise, and all of them have been really pushing Breakout EDU uh, for years now uh, because of the physical aspect and getting physical and getting the kids up and out of the seats. Um, 
So there are options. Um, I, I, I've seen a lot of questions of, can we buy this with our lead money? I know in the past you were able to buy it with lead money. Um, I saw also someone that said that the, uh, the rules have changed. So I'm not 100% sure because I don't have access to all that stuff. Um, they also are asking if we could add it to class, uh, class wallet. So that's something we can look into as well. I know that's one way that you spend your lead money. Um, so we will try to look into that as well. But I will tell you that all of the people that have used it, use it very often. Um, the physical box is amazing. Um, all the games are great. Uh, there is information in the hub, our district hub, the hub, hub.palmbeachschools.org. Um, on how to uh, get more information as well. Uh, myself and Kaylin Markman have been doing a lot of trainings as well. So we are happy to, to support you. There are games at every single grade level. Um, I wanna make sure you understand that. The, the games go from pre-K all the way up to adult. Um, so like I said in the chat, we have done games with principals. We've, been, we've done games with district staff. We've even run full school games. The first day of school back, uh, we, we had 10 rooms going all at the same time, all trying to beat one another to break out. They were all playing the same game in different rooms. Um, so yeah, so, so it's awesome. It's a great product. Uh, you know, obviously uh, I wish we could have a full district license, but we're not able to do that. But um, a lot of schools do have that option. So. Please feel free to reach out, check out the site, check out um, the hub for more information too. And uh, we'll put all of Adam's resources on the resource page that we're gonna build out as well. Um, so thank you for that, Adam. Um, I'll bring you back real quick at the end uh, to, do, uh, to do the final sign off. But uh, the time that everyone is also waiting for is here. So we're gonna be giving door prizes out and what better session to give these door prizes out than the session that Adam's doing as he has graciously agreed to give us two copies of 12 months access to the system that you just learned about. So um, if we could have, I believe Tasha is pulling your name in the chat. I, we do have some digital wait time because there is a delay. Um, but Tasha, if you'll pull the first name um, as we wait, I see we are a little bit behind. Um, hopefully, it'll get uh, it'll go live soon. Uh, drum roll, please. First winner. We're looking. I think it was Tasha. There we go. I saw it. winner Patricia Mayo. Mayo, I think it is. Patricia, congratulations, Patricia. You are the first winner this session. Um, and uh, Tasha, when you're ready, go ahead and pull winner number two. Uh, yes, there are, Adam, are, there are games in dual languages, right? We do have a small number of games that are um, uh, in French and in Spanish. And then there are a bunch of ELA games. So there are games intended for like, you know, people teaching those languages. But we do have some games that are fully in French and Spanish as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I saw that Nightbot picked Patricia Packard for our second winner. So congratulations, Patricia Packard. Um, both of our winners, please be sure to reach out to Dana Rubenstein. Um, you need to make sure uh, that you send her an email and she will send you the form so that we can get your information to send over to Adam and uh, then we will get your winners there. So Adam, again, I'll bring you back in just a minute as we finish up. Again, don't forget to email winners. Don't forget to email. Also, the other thing you're waiting for is, uh, is the attendance. So Please be sure to sign in today. Let us know what you learned. Um, I see other questions about other, uh, other languages. Keep in mind, you can make your own games too. That's the whole point of the platform is you make your own games. And ideally in the end, your, your students can start making their own games. Like that's what Breakout's really pushing us to is, is getting your students to think complex problem solving and get to that point where they can learn it. 
Um, so again, please don't forget to sign in. I also want to share, I shared at the beginning of the last session, uh, at the beginning of this session, we did create a, um, a, a cute little video so of all the tweets from yesterday. So please feel free to watch it over lunch uh, or, or, you know, if it's only seven minutes, show us a nice little video thanking you guys for all the fun stuff from yesterday and, um, and just encouraging those of you tweeting at us. We love to see your tweets. We're getting through them as fast as we can. Um, whoops, I clicked the wrong thing. And again, on behalf of the entire, um, on behalf of the entire EdTech training team and the, the, the EdTech team as a whole, thank you for being here. We do appreciate it more than you ever will know. Our next session is at 1 p.m. And that is, again, our friend Kevin Honeycutt. And the link is either on the website, on the Institute site, or it is at the bit.ly on the screen. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to end by letting Adam have the last word. Take it away, Adam. Yeah, I mean, I guess my, just to echo what I said before, I want to say thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you for teaching your kids and caring so much. And um, I, I wish everyone a very, very healthy and safe and restorative summer, as I know you'll be prepping for whatever comes next in this crazy world. But uh, if anyone could do it, a teacher can. So thank you guys so much. Yes, thank you. Have a good day.